Hi, this is Mike Stryko with the Cornea Service of the Devers Eye Institute in Portland, Oregon. I want to show you a case of a recent Demac FACO that I did. It highlights some of my recent technique changes that have allowed us to achieve a less than 4% rebubble rate that we're quite excited about and would like to share that with the rest of the cornea community. I hope you enjoy the video. I like to use one millimeter side port incisions. I make them fairly flat so that they'll be self-sealing. I fill the anterior chamber with a cohesive viscoelastic such as Helon and then make a 300 micron groove. I feel that this helps me make the uh, very nicely sealing incision. Then I use a 2.4 millimeter diamond keratome for all of my cataract cases. I perform a standard ca capsular rexus. I keep it a little on the small side to keep the lens stable during the endothelial keratoplasty portion. Perform a nice hydrodelineation and hydrodissection. Then remove the lens using a phaco chop technique. I find this is easier with the smaller capsular rexus than other techniques. And once again, just a small capsular rexus to keep the intraocular lens very stable during the uh, demec portion. Using bursts of balanced salt solution to remove most of the cortex, then polish it out the rest of the way with a irrigation aspiration. And insert the lens and dial it into position. Then I use a eight millimeter marking template I use anywhere from an 8 to a 9. This case was an 8 millimeter, and I'm just marking the area of resection. Then using a Terry reverse Sinsky, and I'm scoring the Decimase membrane. And I want to make sure to get a nice clean scoring. I don't like my host Decimase to overlap with my Demet graft. I feel that that's part of the reason I've had such a low rebubble rate. I'm just removing that graft, getting it in nice and central with the reverse Sinsky hook. And once it's free, I'll remove that with a pair of Utrata forceps. And remove that from the eye and pass it off to pathology. Then remove absolutely all of the cohesive viscoelastic and use myocol to bring the pupil down along with gentle stroking of the iris to bring that iris in. Then that's a bent 30 gauge needle. I've bent the tip in the shaft so I can easily place it behind the iris and scratch down onto it with a Sinsky hook to make my PI. I enlarge the wound and then make sure that it'll fit my Stryco glass Demec injector. It fits through about a 3.2 millimeter incision. And Tripan Blue is used to highlight the edges of the pre-stripped tissue to make it easier to see where the stripping has been done. I'm placing a 7.5 millimeter graft into this Fuchs dystrophy patient. Removing the peripheral decimase membrane, making sure that I have a complete partial thickness trephination of the graft, putting some balanced salt solution down so I can lift the edge of the graft and carefully lift it to where it's still attached and peel it away. And then applying a uh, tripan blue stain into that same well. I like to stain it right in the corneous scleral cap, weck away the stain and then add back balanced salt solution so I have a freely floating graft. Once it's freely floating, I gently aspirate it into that Strykodemec Jones tube, which has polished glass edges that are safe for the graft. Then inject the graft into the patient's eye, making sure not to overpressurize the eye because I don't want the graft to shoot back out at me. I'm depressurizing the paracentesis there and then removing the injector. And I'm going ahead and proceeding with tapping this graft into position because it's a fairly floppy graft, almost in perfect position. And so I'm just going to lock it in there with 20% SF6 gas. The SF6 stays around longer than air. Gives the graft a little more support. Then I do place a suture and do a 10 minute timeout to allow the graft to adhere. You can see there's very minimal endothelial damage. And I'm going to adjust the size of the air bubble. I'm removing air, exchanging it with balanced salt solution so I get a freely mobile bubble, and then adding back some air, and that's the end of the case. And this patient went on to do quite well. For additional information or surgical training or patient referrals, please don't hesitate to contact me at the Devers Eye Institute. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I would like to make a couple small clarifications. Anytime that I referred to air, I used 20% SF6 throughout this case to aid in graft support and adhesion. One other mild variation, in most of my cases I will place a suture prior to any graft manipulation to avoid loss of the graft should I accidentally burp the wound. In this case the graft was in such excellent position that I put that step off until later. 
but I'd highly recommend suturing the wound prior to proceeding on most cases.